So now let me get into what people said on my Instagram. Well, my fingers look weird, but I just don't want to get the foundation on. Right, someone said, family dysfunction can be attributed to not even having a stable unit to begin with. And my response is basically, I 100% agree with this, but the foundations are the most difficult, especially if people cannot agree on what a stable unit is and how to achieve it. People have different perspectives in life, okay? And families have people that believe different things, they seek different things, they deal with things in different ways. I think it just goes to show that without communication, without understanding, having that kind of understanding about people and how they respond to things and how they see things, it's really important and you can't have that kind of understanding without having quality time, you know, and having really good conversations about the things that matter to people, not just expecting because I think something is this way then this is how this should be handled because when you have those kind of expectations about things then that's how there's arguments and there's resentment and there's all these kind of things based on expectations but you have to understand people and understand what makes people tick before you have the expectation of someone you can't just enforce an expectation on someone do you know what I mean it's a bit mad if you really think about it my makeup is so trash by the way so if you're watching this for makeup tips please don't because it just ain't it. Somebody else said that something that contributes is actually drugs and I'll read up my response to that first. So I said, this is actually very true. Substance abuse, addiction, and all these things may involve one person, but the effects are felt by many members. However, people often only consider themselves. It's also a sensitive topic and many families adopt the sweep under the rug approach never dealing with issues head on therefore problems and resentment build up and i think this is really important because when there's family members that might be going through you know substance abuse addictions or like personal problems it does seep out into the family because oftentimes the family is a support system and that's what it's there for so i think that role of being a support system should never be overlooked it should never be it should never be it's like the burden that you that you choose to kind of take even though the family relationship isn't um isn't something that you chose <laughs> i think that role of being a support system is very much a responsibility that you know you, you you gotta volunteer to do man you can't just you can't just leave people out here floating in the wind with their problems i think it's something that builds up resentment for people you know if you feel like you know this is my family kind of you have that expectation they'll be there for you but also in the same sense you have to be grateful for that and you know not neglect to have gratitude for people when they're there for you and yeah of course you know you think as family you kind of think that's what they're supposed to do but also don't take that for granted at the same time there's a lot of people that don't have that so if you have that you should be grateful and appreciate that but also if you're going through something know that you you know it, it, it's especially it's people that really love you like they're going through that with you you know another thing someone basically said was ego i forgot to do that Alyssa actually taught me that when you put your powder on you should to get the excess off i completely forgot so i'm probably gonna look caked up today but mad business okay i'm not mua so I basically responded, ego and pride is a killer. Oftentimes it can be escalated by feelings of entitlement. Now I want to get into entitlement a little bit because especially, I can only speak for myself, with a lot of African families, black families, there's this sense of I'm the elder, I'm entitled to respect, right? And that's all well and good if you're somebody that, as a basis I'm going to respect my elders because listen, I don't want no smoke. I, I don't want no smoke. But at the same time, why do you think you're entitled to respect because you're an elder if you're moving mad? If you're somebody that is not you know, an honourable person, a person of integrity, a person that, you know, you're, you're, you support people, you give, you give the younger people hope, you give them guidance and then you just want respect or you don't know anything about the person, you don't care to inquire into their life, their well-being, but you just want respect just for respect's sake. It's a bit like, it's a bit mad. But personally, I don't want no smoke, so I'm gonna respect my elders, but sometimes people be doing the most and then expecting, expecting respect just, just because of age, just because of this, that, and the next. It's like, this is how people will just leave, be leaving you in the wind. People should put their pride and their ego aside and, 
and value people for being people you know we all have a brain we all have feelings we all have emotions we all have wants we all have needs we all have desires we all want we all want respect so i think it's just it, i think a family where everyone's opinion everyone's feelings are valued and everyone's presence is valued and respected and you don't just overlook people just because of age or other things it, it builds a much more healthier dynamic um another person said if the parents always have issues and problems the way it gets dealt with influences a child's mind i 100,000 billion trillion percent agree especially when children are younger like i don't know why i don't know if adults have clocked onto this but you know when like they have an argument or they might try and like hide it from the kids or they're having meetings and they want the kids to go upstairs do they realize that we're all just jamming by the stairs like listening <laughs> Like me and my cousins, sorry if any of my family members are watching, yes, we were hearing everything. Like we would literally, they'd be like, oh, we're having an adults meeting and obviously it's to address issues or whatever the case may be. Often it turns into blowouts, arguments, etc., etc. And they're like, they send the kids upstairs. But all we do is we, we, we creep, 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 creep onto the stairs, put is like on the banister just so we could overhear. And if we hear someone coming, we quickly run upstairs. They probably did clock, but what could you do? So it's like, we experience those things as those things are being experienced by the adults. The, the way that people deal with disagreements, it can seep into the way the, 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 the next generation deals with the same thing. And if it's not dealt with in a productive way, then those same coping mechanisms, those same defense mechanisms, those same ways of dealing with things are gonna seep into the kids and it's just gonna become generational struggles. So that's why when people talk about breaking generational curses, in the spiritual sense, yes, but there's practical ways as well. Things need to be addressed. And I think actually it's better if things are dealt with as a family. Obviously, if situations are more sensitive and you feel like people of a certain age can't handle that, that's definitely understandable. But I think there comes a time when you have to address certain things. Otherwise, it just seeps into the next generation, even when you didn't want that to happen and you wanted to protect, pe protect people from it. But people are often more exposed and more in the know than you think, especially these days like everything is just out there so it's better for things to be addressed at some point rather than like because it, it does influence a child's mind like for real it really does money Woo, money 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 it puts so much of a strain on family relationships money hmm I don't even think I need to say too much on money if I'm to be honest with you. It, it's just it's it's a practical thing it's a physical thing that puts strains on relationships People can't afford to do certain things. It builds resentment. It builds it, it builds resentment, it really does. And also, oof, this one was a big one and I wanna spend some time on this. So someone said, when one person is the glue that holds a family down and that person passes away, death is about to get heavy. It's about to get heavy. Trigger warning is about to get heavy. We're trying to be real here. So um, yeah. I think death and someone passing away, especially as you get older, as you find that the people that were the elders, the head of the family, they they start to pass away, and maybe they're the person that you that people relied on. They went to to hold the glue together. When people are fighting, people go to this person. They try to mediate. So, how I kind of address that um, that response, as I said, because this is actually something that um, my family is experiencing. So I said. It can all be bliss while that person is alive, but then people realise that what that person was working towards, which is often unity, peace, harmony, they're usually the mediator a lot of the time, was never a priority for everyone else, yet they benefited from it without doing the work. So when I say that, I mean that often t as people get older, um, their relationships, they tr it's a generalisation, but I'd like to think that people become more reflective on their life, what's important to them, and oftentimes family is important, your loved ones are important. So, you know, when there are issues, they make it their business to try and offer solutions, have people come together, sort it out. And because of that, the people that are actually going through those arguments and things, they don't develop those skills or they don't prioritise that thing of mediating and and building building bridges and coming to understanding with people after arguments because they can just rely on that person and then they benefit from that because at the end of the day they do all the work of doing the mediating and trying to patch people together but then the people that benefit from it they're not doing that work so what can happen is that person passes away and then there becomes divisions in the family there becomes all these different things because people aren't exercising that skill and prioritizing that thing of 
let me mediate when problems occur and that can really cause breakdowns in families so I think my solution to that especially would be everyone has to pull their weight to sustain a united family it's not easy but it's necessary and I think because that's something that the earlier you learn that when it comes to relationships like family you know commitment the easier it is to overcome certain things um, and the last thing that I wanted to address in the video was love languages because someone's response was no love for one another right and I think love is as a concept it's romanticized a lot it, but love is practical as well as an emotional thing love is practical love is spiritual love is emotional love is an action love is a habit love is a lot of things and because it's a lot of things it encompasses a lot of things when it comes to families i think um an important thing to understand is love languages and if you don't know what love languages are go on google shit ain't don't everybody believe in google go google that shit see what i'm talking about yeah love languages take the test find out what your five love languages are but essentially i can't remember what the author's name is but the guy that came up with the concept or the person basically said there's five love languages it's kind of like seeing how you give and receive love if that makes sense that would actually be a really good practical thing to do like as a family sit down and do the test because you can literally just get it up on your phone and do the quiz it takes about 10 15 I don't think it takes more than 15 minutes it can't it can't take more than 10 even but I think it's a good way if you do it like as a family together if you do it as a family together you could actually learn a lot about people and you know when when you learn those things you can make that conscious effort and strengthen that commitment let's all as we're getting older make a conscious effort to be there for our families, respect that relationship, honour that relationship, pray for that relationship, you know, because not everyone is going to be around forever, so take a deep it for granted, that can't run. A lot of people won't have a smooth journey when it comes to family, there's some people that are committed to misunderstanding you and label you a certain way and will judge you a certain way, even if they are family members, like it's not all going to be Mickey Mouse Clubhouse so if there are people like that and they're driving you up the wall then sometimes you, part of like knowing your boundaries and all that kind of stuff is knowing when to let go and that's something that's really hard to to do but sometimes you gotta love some people from a distance or sometimes you have to love yourself enough to know when something just isn't working out for you my main aim in this video is just to offer a different perspective maybe offer some practical reasons why things aren't working in a certain way and maybe like something that you can consider let me just finish the rest of this look everything i've used i've used in other videos before so if you really are interested but i don't think you are because i'm not doing anything groundbreaking then you can check out other makeup videos and a lot of my makeup videos are also get ready with me's and talk so if you appreciate this kind of stuff and you want more of this kind of stuff then let me know hopefully this was helpful let me know in the comments down below um if there's something that you think i missed out because i would love to revisit this again and maybe like another time maybe have dilemmas from people i don't know um so we could see like practical real life things that um are going on if people would care to, to to share that with me and yeah put it on this platform it's been a while since i sat down like this and i forgot how much i enjoyed it right what wig are we going for today eh why have i only just got into this bloody black got to be glue wow i've really been sleeping i've really been sleeping this thing is crispy have my edges ever been laid like this Ooh, child okay what wig should we go for today all my wigs are jacked up if anybody wants to give me bundles i would highly appreciate that this is as good as it's gonna get See you later. We go again. See? Then. Hey, hey, I'm a real bitch, I can't say shit.